Forces is at the top of the hour. Now back to Fareed Zakaria, GPS. The meteor that exploded over the Euro Mountains nine days ago and the asteroid flyby that quickly followed it have raised concerns around the world. Why didn't we know the meteor was coming? And what do we do about the next close call? Are we sitting targets? Let's find out. The Frederick P. Rose, director of the Hayden Planetarium, the astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson is with us. Welcome back. Thanks for being, having me back on the show. So, first of all, should we be worried, or is this, or is this just a complete coincidence that these two things happen? Hell yes. <laughs> is that allowed? <laughs> uh, first, it was a coincidence that they happened on the same day. Uh, just to clarify for those who might not have remembered, early morning there was an asteroid that entered Earth's atmosphere uh, over the Urals in Russia and exploded in midair about 20 miles up. <laughs> and it shattered windows. The blast was brighter than multiple suns. Uh, in fact, subsequent measurements of how much energy it contained uh, rivaled 30 times that of the Hiroshima bomb. And the reason why everything wasn't just pancake flattened from it was because it exploded so high up in the atmosphere. And so all that was left was the, the energy that remained after it diluted into the space in which it exploded. Later in the day, there was another asteroid that had a close approach, which we've known for about a year. Using the laws of physics and orbital trajectories, you can say exactly where it's going to come. That was of interest because it not only came between us and the moon, it not only came there, we've tracked many that have done that. This one came inside of our technological space. It came closer than our orbiting communication satellites. And so that one you take note of. And that asteroid is about half the size of a football field. The one that hit and exploded over Russia that is about a third that size. We have no capacity to protect Earth from things that small. So what should we be doing? I mean, how, yeah, I how, how scared <laughs> should we be? The, that, you know, the, laws of, you know, the laws of math, of, well, you know, at some point, the probability is one of these things will hit. Okay, fortunately, the larger asteroids, the ones that could disrupt civilization, disrupt the energy grid, the transportation grid, the emergency services uh, response uh, setups. Or just plain kill us. Well, yeah, it'll, it'll all kill somebody who's right below it. What you care, yes, of course we care about that, but globally what you, what deeply concerns you is, is the asteroid strong enough so you have to restart civilization? And then at another level, you risk extinction. Fortunately, those are large, and we have a plan in place, we, NASA has a plan in place to detect and map and track every single asteroid that's large enough to disrupt civilization. The one that exploded over Russia was not large enough to disrupt civilization. And so they're dangerous and they'll hurt and they can kill, but the fact that we can't track them is not as bad as not being able to track the big ones that could really destroy us. So once you know where they are, your next question would be perhaps, do we have a plan to do something about it? And the answer is no. It's all just on paper how to do it. What, what would be the plan? Would it be some kind of military? Yeah. You, you'd shoot a missile to, to shatter it in outer space? Yeah, that's the, the macho solution. <laughs> you, you pull one of your, miss, your missiles out of the silo that you've been sitting there doing nothing since the Cold War, and you blow the, blow the, blow the sucker out of the sky. Uh, the problem is, I mean, here in America, we're really good at blowing stuff up. And let's good at knowing where the pieces land, you know. So, so that's a metaphor for America. I just, <laughs> I'm sticking it to asteroids. You take that where you want. Uh, so, you um, people who have studied the problem generally, and I'm in this camp, uh, see that a, a deflection scenario is more sound and more controllable. So, if this is the asteroid, and it's sort of headed towards us. You send up one way is you send up a, a spaceship, and they'll both feel each other. And the spaceship hovers. And they'll both feel each other's gravity, and they want to sort of drift towards one another. But you don't let that happen. You set off little retro rockets that prevent it. And the act of doing so slowly tugs the asteroid into a new orbit. Because, it, because the spaceship has a kind of gravitational the pull? Exactly. They want to draw towards each other. But if you don't let that happen, and you constantly yank the spaceship away ever so slightly, then the asteroid will chase the spaceship ever so slightly, and that's all you need if you get it early enough, because the tiniest change in your orbit early can completely avoid the target. Now, of course, it's there to harm you another day, but if you get really good at this, then uh, you can have a protection system for the Earth that will, pre that will prevent humans from going extinct. 
which seems a laudable goal. Yeah, I think that's a... <laughs> now, is it fair to say that, that we don't need any innovation in physics or even in engineering? We know how to do this. The question, the, the question is the will and the resources to implement a plan. Like yeah, this. I mean, we use ordinary physics to know how to, 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 to make this work. And physics and engineering, of course, because you've got to make the hardware to enable it. And the price is not even all that expensive given other activities that humans have undertaken. The problem is the asteroid that we might find that will one day hit us, and you want to get it early, all right, um, when do we start concerning ourselves with a budget to handle it? If it's going to come in 100 years, what do you say? Ah, let our descendants worry about that in their Congress. You know, 88% of Congress gets, faces re-election every, every two years. So, how, you know, it's Senate and House, of course. And so, that's not a long enough time scale to match the time scales that matter for our survival. So, what, uh, plus, if an asteroid is going to strike somewhere else in the world, is it NASA that's going to take care of that? So what you really want, I think, is, is a world organization. Maybe every country chips in in proportion to their GDP, something sensible like that. And then there's a pot of money. And whoever has the, res whoever has the space-faring resources at the time it's necessary, space-faring know-how, would then tap into that money, and then you save the Earth. And I think that's a reasonable path. All right, so we have the, your next job all mapped out for you. Space czar for the world. Neil deGrasse, <laughs> pleasure to have you Thanks on. Thanks for having me.